Hello everyone, today I'm excited to show you how to build an AI assistant that's customized to your specific needs using Open Web UI. For instance, let's say you want to create an AI that can process knowledge or documents you have and utilize large language models locally on your computer. With the help of multi-files in Open Web UI, you can create a specialized AI that works for you on specific tasks. Take my content writer modifier, for example. This is an AI assistant specifically designed to write contents for a blog, and I've discovered something really cool. You can even create characters like this modifier post within Open Web UI. So, let's link it up and explore how to run and use it. So, the settings for creating your own AI assistants are straightforward. The description highlights that this is a highly functional assistant that will answer any questions. To use large language models, you can choose from options like Dolphin Mistral, the author of this modifier post used it, but feel free to explore similar benchmark performance models as well. What's interesting is that using similar large language models can sometimes even outperform the original creator of this AI assistance. So, what do you need to do? Simply use this prompt to create an AI assistant for yourself in a chatbot. And right here, we'll start by clicking the Create Modifier button and giving it a name. Maybe I'll give mine a different name instead of copying from others. Let's call it Annie, an AI assistant designed to help with tasks. The description doesn't matter much here, so let's focus on the settings below in the content. I like to click on the Raw Format option which will make it clearer to see the base model and system prompt. Typically, I only use the system prompt here, which has double quotes around it. Then underneath that, we have another set of double quotes. So all we need to do is highlight this system prompt and paste it in. Just remember to check if there's a name for your AI assistance. In my case, I'll change it to Annie. Now, let's rename this AI assistant to match my desired name. It's a simple process that requires scrolling through each line and replacing the existing name with the new one. This method is great for beginners who want to create their own AI assistants. Next, we'll explore prompt suggestions. You won't need to type those out as you can select categories and choose characters or simply click assistance for multiple choice options. To enter our base model, scroll up to the top of this page. Currently, I'm using Llama 3, which is a large language model that I installed on my system. As you can see, I have the latest Jack Content Rider fine-tuned model based on Llama 3, specifically designed for content writers. What's great about this model is that it allows me to create a general AI assistance that can be used in various contexts. So I'll select Llama 3 as my base model. Once you've selected the base model, scroll down and click Save and Create. It may take some time for the model to build, although there isn't a loading indicator on this page. You'll know it's finished when you see new items in your Olama list, including the fine-tuned models we just created using Llama 3. Now that our AI assistant is ready, let's start exploring its capabilities. Go back to Open Web UI and click New Chat in the top corner. Select the model and ask it questions like, Hi, please introduce yourself. I'm asking this question because I want to confirm whether my system prompt will be embedded within this AI assistant. And as you can see, the reply from the AI assistant is, Any highly functional assistance. That's correct. We've successfully created our own AI assistants. Next, we'll explore working with documents in a future tutorial. We're going to import documents for our knowledge base or, as some people call it, the embedding database or vector database, whatever you like to refer to it as. But essentially, it's about adding your own data or documents on top of a large language model and allowing AI models to process any knowledge or data from those documents, providing specific answers and tasks. You can import document mapping using JSON files that require this. However, you can also click the Add button here. It's a very handy way to create your own document base. Simply click the Add button and it will pop up a black pop-up window where you can select Browse and add any kind of documents from your file explorer. For example, I have some stable diffusion tutorials that I can use as an example. 
here's some script talking about stable diffusions tutorials and I've also added another script that will be this one. Yeah, it's the stable diffusions IC light script. So in this tech, I'll put stable diffusion content. Yeah, the text below is where I'll put stable diffusions and this document is about IC light. It's another diffusion model for AI image lighting effects. And that's it. Click save to save your changes. As you can see, I've popped up an item called script fine tuned doc. This is one of my scripts for the stable diffusions IC light. You can still edit your content or do anything else you want in here. The name tag, actually I can customize this M tag to something like SDIC light, so it's easier to identify. And the title, I'll rename this to make it easier to identify as well. Once we're done with this, you can also batch edit more documents in this folder path of your open web UI. And basically, that's what we need. Just click scan and you'll have all the additional documents imported into here, using them as a knowledge base and so on. So, let's get back to our chat with Annie. We can ask her relative questions like, for example, do you know about IC light in stable diffusions? And explain it to me if you know it. Once we set up the documents, this will be like a small embedded database knowledge base for us to chat with large language models. By using this, you'll have to basically copy these tag names. So here are the instructions. Use the tag names in your prompt input to load your selected documents. If you have multiple documents, of course, you'll need to put multiple tags in your chat input. So come back to our chat with any AI assistance, and we're starting to input this. Start by adding the sign off command, and you'll see that there are all the documents you can run. It will take up a lot more memory to load them if you have hundreds or thousands of documents embedded already. But if I use a tag name, like IC light tag or stable diffusions tag that will be loaded a little bit less than using all documents of course and if you just run with one specific document for example the one i just did is the stable diffusions IC light script fine-tuned video script then it would be very lightweight and focus only on specific answers for you so I'll choose this one and ask questions like, what do I see? And here's the answer based on the knowledge base that the AI assistant has built with my documents. IC Light is an AI model used for generating light effects in images. It's a tool that can be used to add lighting in an image by darkening the background and highlighting specific areas or objects. This effect can be controlled using various settings such as the position of the light source, blurred radius, and others. So, that is correct. It's basically what I talked about in my previous diffusion models in my other stable diffusion channel. So, we can rely on this method to create more related topics and embed them in the documents area. So, let's do one more thing. For example, I have another document that talks about stable diffusions. Here's another document that I wrote which is about using IP adapter version 2 workflow in stable diffusions comfy UI and creating an e-commerce workflow that specifically displays your e-commerce product using an AI generated image. We can go back to the chat with Annie and ask her any questions. For instance, this time I'll use the tag command. As you can see, there's another new tag here, the IP adapter and stable diffusions. And previously we had the IC light as well. And we have another new tag, e-commerce. Let's say I have a general question about stable diffusions and I'll select this tag called stable diffusion. That will include all the documents that have the tag of stable diffusions. In my case, that would be these two documents, including the tag of stable diffusions. We'll use these two documents as our information reference. Right here, I'll click on the tag stable diffusions and ask another question about image generation. So I'll ask, can we use AI images with different styles and lighting effects? Give me an example, especially for my products selling online. Okay, here's another answer that is related to my question. And right now, 
you can see that the AI is not going to give me a very general or vague answer that doesn't feel like an answer. Those kinds of replies are already very narrow and practical with solid answers because they're based on all that information I wrote and digest it and generate content that can answer whatever related question I have for this query. This time I asked, use AI images with different styles and lighting effects. Give me an example, especially for my product selling online. I haven't mentioned any keywords relative to e-commerce or stable diffusions. I just uh, used other words related to those topics. And the AI assistant is giving me a very specific information, a very solid step-by-step -step guide on how to use stable diffusions to generate AI images, setting different lighting effects and using AI images to generate different styles for my online products. Additionally, AI models like OOT diffusions can be used to change the outfit styles on the models in the image. That's a very good reference from my information from my documents. And it mentions that, for example, if you're selling a clothed item with different colors or patterns, you can generate multiple images of the same product with different style options. That is something I mentioned in my previous video script. So I did include that in my document here, the IP adapter V2 workflow for e-commerce, another video script that I have that talks about this topic. It shows up in the AI assistance replied result here. So that's a very practical way to use your own locally installed open web UI and create a special agent or specific topics of AI agents or build a knowledge base to help you with your work productivity or creating anything creative, whatever you want to do. So yeah, this is a very good practical way to set up your own embedded database and also specific usage of AI agents and try out. We've talked about open web UI installations and I want to explore more about open web UI and leveraging Olama to run more kinds of AI stuff locally. So I'll see you guys in the next videos. Have a nice day. See ya.